Top Dog Kings and Queens. Welcome back to day 16 of Top Dog Toba, where we bring you an 11 plus video every single day of the month. My name is Hayden. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to be looking at something really cool and juicy in mathematics. But before we get onto that, I'd just like you to point you in the direction of our website, where if you like these type of videos, you will be amazed by the 11 plus preparation resources that we prepared for you on our website. Premium videos in English, verbal reasoning, maths and non-verbal reasoning released every single week of the year for you to use with your child. And they can even download a homework task to independently practice the skills that were taught in that lesson. A great way to learn. There's even a walkthrough for the homework task as well in case they get a bit stuck on those questions. Now, the best thing is if you if you buy our one-off uh, price for the year and use my discount code, which is vote Hayden in capital letters in that promotion code box, then you will get 15% off of the annual price. So a nice, decent saving there for you. You can also use the code vote Dylan if uh, you want to go to that side of the of, of the game. But remember, every single vote that I get takes me away from that forfeit at the end of the challenge, at the end of the month. So uh, make sure you use my discount code and not his. Now remember, also every single thousand views we get um, adds in an extra vote for that competition as well. So the views sway this competition. If you want me to win, make sure you share my videos and not his with your friends, um, top 10 friends, perhaps share it with them, get me some more views, watch it on repeat 4,000 times. That's fine. That's fine with me because I'll be closer to winning anyway onto the video. So yesterday Dylan left you with this question right here in sequences. It's a great question. And the answer was C simply because every time a new circle is added in the top right, it just shunts everything else down. So it goes always in the same order, black, then black, then cross, then black, then cross. Then we can tell from here that it would be white, black cross, white, gray, and then you get the line as well. Nice, good question there. Now today is a math lesson and um, it's all about related facts. Now to relate facts to something, you need to know the original facts. You need to know your times tables. Now don't turn away, don't go, oh, my teacher says this all the time. They don't leave me alone. It's because it's true. You've got to learn your times tables. And when I show my kids at school these kind of times table grids, they go, oh, but there's just so many facts, Mr. Stevens. I get my little violin out and I go, I know it's okay. But realistically, you don't have, that's not that's not a good reflection of how many facts you've got to learn. There's not 144 facts. First of all, straight down the middle is a mirror line and everything this side is the same as the top side. So that straight away puts it down to 78 facts. And if I'm being real with you guys, we can gray out a lot more of these facts because they're just quite easy to learn. For example, your one times table, your two times table, your fives, your tens, even your elevens up to, up to this point where it keeps doubling the digit. They're just easy facts to learn, guys. And there's an interesting st statistic in times tables that these 12 facts that I've left in green, there's only 12 there, by the way, are the most commonly misremembered um, time stable facts. So if you can learn those 12 facts, you've already got a huge advantage over other people who think learning time tables is so hard and takes so long. Yeah, it takes a bit of work, but you know what? There's a lot of easy facts and there's not that many really tricky ones to remember. You can do it. Easy, easy. Anyways, on to related facts. So this is what I mean by related facts. We can use knowledge like times tables to solve other questions in our heads, not having to use formal written methods. So for example, when I see six times 40, this is what I'm really thinking. I'm using the fact six times four in my head to solve it because I could rewrite this question as six times four times 10. Because remember, 40, if I split into, into its factors, is the same as four times 10. So really what happens is you've just got the same question as above, six times four, but then you're timesing it by 10 at the end, which is why people often say, oh, if you see that zero, it's just six times four with a zero on the end. And they're not wrong. You've just got to be careful because that changes when it gets to decimals, which we'll get to later. Here's another example for you. Using the fact three times nine is 27, we can really easily solve these ones because this is the same as three times 100 times nine. And remember with multiplication, you can, you can do it in any order. So I can do the three times nine first, which is 27, and I can times it by 100 and get 2,700. It's the same fact, but 100 times bigger. And interestingly, below is exactly the same thing again. It's just that my um, powers of 10 have been distributed slightly differently. So I could rewrite this as three times 10 times nine times 10. And obviously if I reordered this all around, the two times by tens would, would make a times by 100 and it's the exact same as this fact above it, okay? So again, what a lot of children do is they go, oh, I can see three times nine, and then I'm gonna add uh, these two zeros on the end. But again, just be careful if it's, if it's a decimal number, 
adding zeros onto the end of your number is not really going to be that helpful. But we will come to that now. So let's have a look at decimals then. So what about if my powers of 10 get smaller? Now I'm talking about powers of 10 here a lot, guys. If you haven't checked out day five of Top Dog October, it's really worth going to check out because we do a lot of timesing and dividing by 10, 100 and 1,000 in that video. Um, if you're finding this a bit tricky. So if I know that eight times seven is 56, well, this factor has just become 10 times smaller. So all that means is my answer is also going to become 10 times smaller if nothing has changed to this one, which it hasn't, nothing's changed to the seven. So 56, if I had, my, if, if I had it in my place value columns, my tens and my ones and my tenths, it just moves down a column and becomes 5.6. So st I can still use my related fact knowledge to solve 0.8 times seven. But here's something really cool, and I love teaching this to any children that join my classes over the years, is that if we go down to the bottom one, you can see that eight is still becoming 0.8. It's, it's becoming 10 times smaller. But this time the seven isn't staying a seven, it's actually becoming 10 times bigger. And what this does is kind of like a seesaw. It balances out the equation. And it means that my answer is going to stay at 56. Because if you think about it, if I take 56 and I divide it by 10 for my first factor, but then I times it by 10 again because of the second factor, then I just get back to 56. So that's really quite cool, isn't it, guys? So keep an eye out for those sort of little tricks and tips in the future. I've got three questions here for you to have a go at now. Using your time tables knowledge, can you get these right? Pause the video and have a go. Whizzing through them, I can see in here I've got seven times nine times 10 times 10 because of these two tens here. In other words, times in by 100. Seven times nine is 63. And to times that by 100, it move up two columns and it looks like I'm just plonking those two zeros on the end. Pretty cool. Next one, same again. I'm going to rush into it this time. Four times three is 12 because they're whole numbers. I just know that when I times it by one, two, three, four, four lots of 10, which is 10,000, I can just put those four zeros on the end and put my commas in to make the answer 120,000. Nice and simple. And last one, I'm gonna be a bit more careful now because it's decimals. I know this is the same as uh, nine times 12, but the nine has been divided by, down two columns divided by 100. So I'm gonna do nine times 12 and then I'm gonna make sure I move it down two columns. Nine times 12 is 108. So I move that down two columns, the one will be here, leaving me with 1.08 as my answer. Did you get them right? Well done if you did. If you didn't, just pause, take your time, go back, have a little watch through that again, make sure you're happy, and do check out day five of Top October for powers of 10. Three more questions for you in a bit of context for the first one now, and the bottom one is my favorite trap answer ever. Children always get it wrong. Can you avoid it? So don't be scared just because it's money. Realistically, this number is still just 0 0.7 times in by 11. This extra zero doesn't make a difference to the number. It's just 0 0.7. Now, that's the same as seven times 11, but this factor is 10 times smaller than seven. Seven times 11 is 77. I need to divide it by 10 to adjust it. I will get 7.7 .7 as my answer. Now, if I was writing that as money, I wouldn't write 7.7 .7 because obviously money, we always have two decimal places. So we would put the zero there. Seven pounds 70 would be my answer. On to the next one, this time we've got the answer here. Seven times something is 49. And just think of this as 49 times 100, hence the two zeros. So whatever this number needs to be, it needs to be something times 100 to make, to make this up. So seven times seven is 49, times it by 100 to, make, to make, uh, make up for these two zeros. I get the answer 700, it makes sense. And the last one, my favorite question ever, this is what children write, and it's wrong. And they go, no, it's not. I got the two zeros and I go, it's wrong. And they're like, no, it's not. I think I can count two zeros. And I'm like, yes, but it's wrong. And Dylan will come in and be like, oh dear child, it's wrong, okay? Because five times four is 20. That already ended in a zero. I can't then count that as one of my extra zeros. I then have to put my two zeros on the end. The answer to this question is 2000. Did you fall into the trap? <sighs> well, listen, I'm not right there. So you can just lie. You could just be like, no, <laughs> obviously not. <laughs> Duh. Moving on. Let's try this question and then I'm going to leave you with a question, all right? So pretty cool one. Uh, we're going to really put everything into practice now. So you're going to have a go at this first. Let me read it to you. Grayson is trying to work out 0 0.09 times 6,000, but the decimal button on his calculator is not working. Oh no. Which of these could Grayson type instead and still get the correct answer to the calculation that he wants to solve? Which of these works? I don't know. Have a go. What's the answer? So 
So using my logic, right, of if I times this factor by 10, but I divide this factor by 10, I know that the answer won't change. That's going to be useful. So it would be the same as doing 0.9 times 600, but that's still got a decimal. So let's go again. This would also be the same as doing 9 times 60. So there we go. That's something I could type in my calculator without using decimals, but that isn't an option here. However, the answer is C. I want you to see if you can see why. Why is 9 times 60 the same as 90 times 6? Well, let's just think about it. 9 times 6 times 10 is what I can break 9 times 60 into, right? Because 60 breaks into 6 times 10. Now, if I break down 90 times 6, I get 9 times 10 for 90 times 6. And didn't we say that with multiplication, it doesn't matter which order you times them in. Aren't these two just the same thing? Can you see it, guys? 90 times 6 or 9 times 60, they're both just 9 times 6 with a 0 on the end. So that's why C is my answer. Pretty cool question. I'm going to leave you with one now. Guys, tune in tomorrow to see the answer to this question. I really want you to have a go. We've got Matilda here using that same broken calculator as Grayson. The decimal button's not working. So a very similar question. She types in 50 times 60 instead to get the correct answer. What could her original question have been? So it's a kind of reverse on the last question that we just did together. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Do keep checking out the community tab and leaving us comments and likes as you go because we really appreciate all the support. And you can see who is in the lead right now and who looks like they're going to be doing the forfeit at the end of this month. We're halfway through. We're just over halfway through. So plenty of time for us to catch up with each other and uh, make this a real juicy competition. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.